Hey guys, welcome to our live video today. It is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. I hope you have someone or a pet or somebody to <laughs> you're spending it with. Um, of course, Kim is always our Valentine. She's such a sweet, sweet little girl. She's over here laying down next to me. So thank you for joining me, even though it is a holiday. Um, we're going to make this one short and sweet because it is a holiday, and I want to make sure everybody has plenty of time with their loved ones today. Um, we're just talking about conventional vet care versus integrative vet care. So as you start coming in, I see we have a couple people on. I want you to go ahead and post in the chat um, what who your Valentine is, if it's your dog or your cat or um, your, even if it's your husband <laughs> or your wife, that's okay too. Let me know um, who your Valentine is. Let me know also um, the, your, about your pets. So their names, what kind of pets they are, if they're a dog or a cat or a ferret or a bird. Go ahead and post all of that in the chat. Susie is here. She says, hi, happy Valentine's. Hi, Susie. Thank you so much for being here today. Jennifer says, happy Valentine's Day. Yes, Scout is sitting right next to me too, keeping me warm. Yes, we actually, <laughs> we actually groomed Kim yesterday for, we cut her hair for the very first time. And while I think she is absolutely adorable with short hair, I really miss her long hair. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what, what happens in the future, but we are definitely um, working to, to make sure we keep her warm as well. JR says, hey, Jessica, happy Valentine's Day. Kim is my second Valentine. Yes, she absolutely is. She's such a sweetheart. And um, with you other, with everybody else out there, go ahead, um, if you're just joining us, post in the chat and let me know who your Valentine is. Let me know all about your pets and why you are joining us today. Again, happy Valentine's Day. We will make this one short and sweet um, so everybody can get back to whatever your Valentine's Day plan is for today. We actually are not doing much for Valentine's today. We'll probably just, you know, have dinner as usual. <laughs> um, since where we live, we still cannot go sit down in a restaurant to eat. So um, that's normally something we would do for Valentine's Day and something we are not able to do for Valentine's Day this year. Jennifer says, Scout is a 19-month-old English lab. Yes. Um, English lab. Oh, and a 19 months old, you're, you're almost... You're almost to the two-year mark um, where you're going to, yeah, that's going to be fun, um, especially with such a big dog. Angela says, my hound mix Cody is my Valentine. Aww. He's a Beagle Basset, Basset Fox Hound Mix. Wow. Yes. So we had a Beagle growing up. Well, my brother did. It was technically his Beagle. And that dog ate every. Thing. I mean, he literally like chewed through cabinets in the kitchen. It was crazy. But I mean, I was a kid. And so I know a lot more now um, than I did as a kid. So hopefully things would be a lot different now. But um, wow, yes. Be Beagle, Bassett, Fox, Hound, Mix. I mean, do I, he probably has a lot of hunting tendencies. Um, so hopefully we're working to help help him with um getting all of those tendency like any pent up energy he has out by helping him like focus on a hunt maybe even with a flirt pole that would probably be very very fun for um a, a foxhound um let's see angelus says he's a love bug and doesn't eat really anything that oh so good um but of course we have, we know so much more now about providing enrichment and keeping our dogs happy um so you know he was when he was left alone he would definitely destroy the our dog growing up or my brother's dog when we were little um angela says we go for we go to trails for decompression walks that's wonderful that's amazing and and um you know every dog is different and finding what works for our dog is so important. Um, and that sounds like 
I mean, that's just wonderful. Taking your dog for walks in general is wonderful, but providing them with all that nature, like on a trail, that's amazing. So today we are just, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about the difference in integrative vet care and conventional vet care. And there are actually a couple um, more categories of vet care, but those were the one, you know, I didn't want to like overwhelm the title of the video with all these different types of vet care. But we are very, in the U.S. specifically, but in other, um, other countries as well, we are really primarily provided with what we know as conventional vet care. And you can go ahead, if you have any comments or questions about this, go ahead and post in the chat. Um, specifically, let me know if you think you are going to, um, you would know if you're going to an integrative veterinarian or a holistic veterinarian or maybe a homeopathic veterinarian, you would know that. So go ahead and post in the chat and let me know. Otherwise, you're probably seeing a conventional veterinarian. Um, so go ahead and post in the chat and let me know what kind of veterinarian you use. And there is no wrong answer. In fact, I use, well, I, I currently use a conventional veterinarian, um, but I already, for when we move, I have lined up a uh, integrative veterinarian who I've been in contact with to start taking over care of my animals once we move. So, um, it, it also depends on where you live, of course. You're not going to see huge differences in pricing. Um, it's really about the care that the veterinarian is providing to your pet. And for me, um, using a conventional veterinarian has has worked recently in the past six, eight years, um, Susie says conventional. Yes, that makes sense. Most veterinarians are conventional veterinarians. Um, so it, it has been working for me because I have a very good relationship with my veterinarian. Um, JR says, wow, you've already found a new vet. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of research um, trying to find a holistic veterinarian <clears throat> in the area where we're gonna be moving to. And um, there aren't really any in driving distance, but I found a veterinarian who actually makes house calls in the area we live in, and she's an integrative veterinarian. So I've already been in contact with her. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've already been in contact with her. And <clears throat> so I, you know, there's, I, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying right now the idea of having um, at-home vet care for my pets especially, um, you know, for my cats, but, um, there are still going to be, there are still going to be times when you have to go into a veterinary clinic, um, especially if, you know, procedures are, are needing to be done, but basically, you know, so a conventional veterinarian is very much like a conventional doctor that we would use, um, a human doctor. So they go to vet school, and it's actually not that easy to um, get into vet school. Susie says, I'm in a small rural area and th there's very few vets to choose from. Absolutely, I completely understand that, Susie. That is, um, even even where I live, I'm in San Diego, but I'm like, I'm, I'm north of the city. There are tons of vets to choose from, but the holistic vets are all like, really localized in like a downtown area, which is pretty far away from me, even though it sounds like, oh, you live in San Diego. San Diego is big. Um, so they're still pretty far away from me. And because of traffic and other, other factors, it would take a long time to get to them. Um, yeah, Susie, it sounds great to have a visiting vet. Yeah, there are, um, even in rural areas you can find, and I don't know specifically your area, but you can find vets that do house calls. Um, but, uh, you know, a conventional veterinarian is, is, like I said, very much like a conventional doctor or human doctor. So they go to vet school and it's, it's not terribly easy to get into vet school, very much like it's not terribly easy to get into med school for a human doctor. Um, and in a lot of respects, it's, vet school is, is harder than medical school for human doctors because a veterinarian has to learn 
so many different species of animals, whereas a human doctor is just learning one species, um, humans, right? So in some regards, and, and I've not been to either, but it, the, you know, there's debate out there. In some regards, it's vet school is actually a lot harder. Um, just because you're learning so many different species of animal um, that, you're, that you're going to be caring for. But when you're going through vet school, when you're going through med school, um, really, and you, I'm sure you're noticing this, even with your care, with human care, medical care in the U.S. and largely in Canada and the U.K. and a lot of, you know, large developed countries is very reactive meaning that something is wrong so we need to figure out how to fix it right or at the very least how can we relieve the symptoms of what is wrong um at least until we can get to a point where we can figure out what is wrong and and fix it right so it's very reactive when you go to the doctor do they even ask you about your diet? I mean, that's one of the main, um, you know, contributing factors to anything going on with us is our diet. Um, of course, there are environmental things that can be affecting us as well. And stress and um, so many different things can be affecting us. But if you think about disease and um, infect in what is happening inside of our body, diet is so key to to that. And I mean, when was the last time your doctor even asked you about your diet? Um, and so it's very reactive and very driven by pharmaceuticals, right? And oh, there's a pill for that. And the side effect that you're experiencing from that pill, there's another pill for that right? So we wind up taking all of these medications to put band-aids on issues that we have without actually addressing the cause, you know, the root of the issue. And that's very much what medical care is today. Um, and that's true for humans. And that's also true for our animals. If you think about going into your, your veterinarian, Yes, it's important to go for your, you know, annual wellness and for seniors, oftentimes it's every six month um, wellness visits. But how often are people not going in, not taking their pets in for wellness visits and just going in when something is wrong, right? So all your vet has the opportunity to do, it, you know, is really to react to an illness or an injury. And it's protocol to give, you know, XYZ vaccinations on this schedule. Like you need these vaccinations at this age and these vaccinations at this age and, you know, boosters every year or every three years, depending on what um, vaccine you're giving your pet. And it's very templated, right? So there's, there's this template for every single animal coming in to a veterinary office. When in fact, every animal is different. And these vaccines, while I am not anti-vaccine and this, this um, live today is not really about vaccines, but I'm just gonna bring it up because we're talking about vet care. I'm not anti-vaccine at all. There is definitely um, a need a reason there's a place for vaccine, but I am anti over vaccination. So, um, you know, this template for you need this vaccine on this date, and then a year later, you need a booster, and a year later, you need a booster, and a year later, that's not really, that's not proactive. It's very, it's very templated. So, um, and we'll talk about titer tests on another. Uh, on another live, but if you know what a titer test is, go ahead and post in the comments and let me know. If you don't know, post in the or post in the chat and let me know. If you're watching a replay, you can post in the comments as well. Um, I'd love to hear from you and find out just kind of a baseline where everybody is and what we all know, so I know like 
where to, to go forward in the content I'm bringing you, I would really, really appreciate that. So go ahead and post if you know or if you don't know what a titer test is in the chat box. Um, so when we talk about alternative care, whether it's for a human or for your pet, and of course I'm, I, I'm a pet parent coach, so what I talk about is about pets, but I like to bring things back to humans as well because we can really internalize it and understand it a little bit better and then apply that to our pets. So alternative care is going to be integrative care, holistic care, homeopathic care. Um, I decided to do conventional versus integrative because I think that is going to be one of the best uh, best ways to, to, to show the difference. Um, an integrative veterinarian is going to have access and is definitely not opposed to using conventional vet care, meaning um, you know vaccines and antibiotics and, and pharmaceuticals when necessary but they are really treating your whole pet. They're gonna take, you know, a snapshot of your dog or cat, and they're gonna look at the whole animal. They're gonna look at um, the diet, what you're feeding. They're gonna look at um, environmental factors. They're gonna look at behavioral um, factors going on with your pet. They're not just going to, you know, when you walk into your vet today and say, um, oh, I think, I think uh, my dog may have a cold or, you know, my cat may have a cold or maybe they're throwing up or, you know, I, I need help, right? So a conventional vet is going to say, bland diet um, and watch it over the next few days and they may give some sort of medication, maybe an anti-nausea medication, um, you know, de depending on other other factors. They, th but that's basically what they're going to do. They're going to say, put your do put your pet on a bland diet for a few days. Um, you know, watch them. Maybe give them some anti-nausea medication. That's that that's going to be about it. Um, whereas if you go to an integrative veterinarian, they're going to say, what are you feeding your dog? They're gonna say, has anything in the environment changed recently, right? Like maybe, have you, do you have maybe a fragrance plugin that you've recently added? Or maybe, um, are you diffusing essential oils that are not animal safe? They're going to, they're, they're gonna ask all kinds of questions related to external factors that could be going on. Um, you know, has your dog's behavior, how has your dog's behavior changed in the last few days? Have you visited anywhere new or different? Um, you know, has any, any, ha, have there been any other animals around that may be new or different? Like they're gonna ask all these different questions to get a really broad picture of what could be going on to find out the best ways to care for your animal because it's not all, you know, pharmaceuticals. Susie is saying, um, Susie, I had them after hepatitis vaccine to find out if the vaccine was working. This is so, oh yeah, so um, you had a titer test done. That's awesome. So you have a little bit of an understanding of what a titer test is. And that, that for me, Kim, um, we're going to take her to see our veterinarian. And yes, like I said, she is a conventional veterinarian, but I have a very good relationship with her. Um, and I can talk to her about things and she understands that I am, I, I you know, I feed my dog a raw food diet, a, a balanced raw food diet. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very much into caring for her holistically whenever possible. Um, but I'm also not opposed to using Western medicine. I'm not opposed to using antibiotics when necessary or anti-nausea medication mm -hmm. when necessary. Um, so I have a very good relationship with her and she understands that there's a balance, right, going on. And she'll say, I can help you here. I don't know about anything here. Um, so anyway, anyway, she knows we're, we're coming in and we'll do her annual wellness visit, um, which will probably be next, next month or possibly in April. Um, 
we'll do her annual wellness visit and we'll talk about all of the factors that, that, you know, we're concerned with. Like right now we are, my husband and I are struggling with um, keeping her on a diet. We have realized that we have overfed her um, and we're working on, we're working on that right now. Um, so that's something that we'll, we'll talk about with our veterinarian, but she's going to get a tighter test done, even though according to a conventional veterinarian, she needs vaccines. I don't know that she needs vaccines. The only way to know if she needs vaccines is to run a titer test to find out where her, um, uh, where her levels of immunity actually lie. If she already has levels of immunity for rabies or Bordetella or, you know, whatever else, um, Lepto, whatever it may be, if she already has levels of immunity, why would we introduce more vaccines in her body? So um, that's really going to be a, a huge difference in a conventional vet versus an integrative vet. And also a, when we talk further about, you know, taking it a step further and seeing a holistic veterinarian, they're going to be much more interested in finding um, natural alternatives to any and everything. Um, even, you know, heartworm prevention, flea and tick prevention, I don't put um, chemical flea and tick prevention on my dog, I, ha you know, I, I use a natural uh, resource for that. And my vet understands that. But traditionally, most people walking into a veterinarian's office, it's, you need, you know, this chemical flea and tick repellent, you need these um, heartworm pills every month, which are, you know, attacking your dog's neurologic system. We, you need these sets of vaccines every year or every three years. And so um, there's not any wiggle room. Like there's no conversation about alternatives when you're seeing a conventional, conventional veterinarian generally. Now, if you have been doing your research and you talk to your vet about alternatives, some of them are gonna be open to it. Some of them are not going to be open to it. I would say if your vet is not at all open to it, then you need to find another veterinarian. Um, at the very least, your vet should hear you out and say, that's interesting. Um, and I understand you wanna, you know, maybe not put so many drugs in your dog's body. So if we want to explore this route, then these are the tests that we can do to make sure it's working, right? So having a veterinarian who's willing to work with you um, even if they are a conventional veterinarian, is is really going to be very helpful um, for you and empowering you as a pet parent because you are ultimately the person, you're the end of the, the line. You are responsible for everything about your pet. Um, JR says, great information. This helps a lot. Thanks so much, JR, for being here. Um, it, I, I hope it is helpful, and I don't want to keep you guys too long today because I know it's a holiday. Um, we're approaching, we've got a few more minutes. We're approaching the 30-minute mark, and I don't want to go too much over that. I know normally, even though these are only supposed to be about 30 minutes, normally we go about 45 minutes. Sometimes we've even gone longer, um, but I don't want to run too terribly long today because it is a holiday. I want you guys to get back to your Valentines, even your um, furry Valentines sitting next to you. So... If you do have any questions about this, now would be the time to go ahead and post them in the chat, or if you're watching later on, post in the comment section. Um, I, I'm i thrilled to see that Susie has some um, prior knowledge of titer testing, but like I said, we are going to have Kim titer tested um, because I don't want to over-vaccinate her. Like, if we think about the heavy metals and... Um, other things that are, it's, it's, I think our primary concern is the heavy metals, but if we think about what actually is inside of a vaccine that they use to, you know, make it last longer, um, so it, it doesn't instantly go bad, you know, um, but the, I think heavy metals are some of the most concerning that are in a lot of vaccines. Why would we want to introduce that into our pet's body if it's not necessary? So, you know, having a level of immunity, of course, for, especially for something as serious as rabies, right? Um, and, and of course, there are other things. Parvo, um, you know, we can vaccinate for. 
and and that's serious and life-threatening for dogs as well and you know something that serious we do want to vaccinate for but we don't want to over vaccinate for it um Oh, Susie says, thank you. Have a great Valentine's Day. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great Valentine's Day as well with your um, pet. Let me see. Did you say, I don't think Susie, you said what kind of pet you have or their name, but let me know before you go, go ahead and post in the chat. Let me know what kind of pet you have and what their name is. I would love to know. Um, so That's going to be, I think, the biggest difference in working with a conventional vet versus an integrated veterinarian. And really, it, it, if there is an integrated veterinarian in your area, it shouldn't be too hard to find. I mean, a simple Google search um, should, you know, just if you just type in integrated veterinarian near me, right? If you're logged into Google, Google, you can just type integrated veterinarian near me and you should be able to find um, if it may pull up all different kinds of veterinarians, quite honestly, but you can even call around if it doesn't specifically say that um, one vet or another is specifically, you know, a holistic veterinarian or an integrated veterinarian, you can call and ask. Sometimes there will be um, vet offices that have multiple veterinarians um, that reside there or that, that practice there, and maybe three of them are conventional and one of them is holistic or integrative. Um, so maybe the name of the veterinary hospital doesn't suggest that they have integrative care or, hol or holistic care, but maybe one of the practicing veterinarians um, actually does do integrative or, or holistic care. Um, Susie says, now I want to find a holistic vet. <laughs> yes. Um, Bunny is a pit mix. That's awesome. And I love that, um, her name is Bunny. That is so cute. Um, so yeah, I mean, even, even, and a lot of, I found in my search, a lot of integrative and holistic veterinarians are more like, are more likely to offer at home visits as well. Um, not saying that is 100% true across the board. I've just noticed that when I was searching where we're moving to. Um, conventional vets, you know, they have big practices. They stay really busy. They don't have the opportunity to leave their office. Um, whereas a lot of holistic and integrated veterinarians, they have, they have, they, they realize that, you know, I can best help X number of patients at a time and um, it may be easier for them to travel and, do, and, and a lot of veterinarians who especially work with like farm animals, they're going to, they're definitely going to do, um, a lot of home visits or farm visits. Um, let's see, Susie says someone dumped her off a few months ago. Oh, she's about a year and a half according to the vet. That is so sad that somebody just dumped her, but I'm really really happy that you took her in. Um, it sounds like she has some really good care with you. So I definitely appreciate you participating and letting me know about Bunny. I would love to see a picture of her as well. Um, I just, I, I love pitties and I love, I love pit mixes as well. Of course, I love all dogs. So I can't say that I, I definitely love one over the other, but, <laughs> um, so cute. I hope, I hope that this explanation and, and of course this is a pretty simplified explanation um, but I hope it's helpful so maybe even the next time you go to your vet even if you do have a conventional veterinarian you can open up dialogue about um, providing alternative care for your pet um, and I hope that your veterinarian is is open to it um, because at the end of the day, you're the one who's responsible for your pet and every pet, every animal is different. Um, so providing them the best possible care with the information that you have available to you is, is important. Um, and I would, I would think, I would hope that most veterinarians are going to be happy that you're taking so much more interest in the care of your animal. Um, they should be right because they're going to, they're going to notice a difference. They're going to notice a huge change, um, and a huge shift in, 
the well-being of animals that come into their practice when their the pet parents are taking a greater interest in in, in the health of their pets and finding um, healthier ways to raise our animals. And um, so I, I, I do hope when you talk to your veterinarian next time or the next time you get that flyer in the mail saying your pet is due for a vaccine, that you question it and say, are they really though? Um, and I know as far as my vet goes, I've talked to her about tire testing. She knows that's absolutely 100% what we're going to be doing on our next visit. Um, and she she's told me that, you know, she's she's pretty much just stopped offering it to people, not because it's not the best option, but because it's, it is more expensive than vaccinating, than just blindly vaccinating your animal. And a lot of pet parents are like, they don't understand why it's important to titer test versus over vaccinate. So people are like, just give them the vaccine because it's cheaper, um, which is very unfortunate, I think. I think, you know, a lot more education needs to go in. But a lot of veterinarians just feel like they don't have the time to provide that education, which is why it is our responsibility to seek out that information. Um, and my responsibility to help provide you with that information when you are seeking it out. So um, Susie says she's a good girl. We are blessed. Absolutely. I love that. That's so sweet and very appropriate for Valentine's Day. So like I said, guys, we're going to make this short and sweet. I don't want to keep you from your Valentine today. I hope you have a wonderful holiday whether it is with a significant other or with your furry companion or both. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. I hope you got plenty of wonderful information and tips out of this video for the next time that you talk to your veterinarian or you take your pet in to see your veterinarian. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure to post them in the comments below. And I really do, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, make sure if you are not already subscribed, look down there at that subscribe button. If it's red, that means you're not subscribed. You need to click it and turn it gray. Once it's tur it turns gray, it'll say subscribed and next to it, a bell will appear. So go ahead and click that bell and select allow all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video, which is on Wednesdays. I post videos on Wednesdays and right now I'm going live on Sundays and YouTube will be able to notify you of all of that once you're subscribed and click the bell. Also make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. I hope you learned something so um, go ahead and click the thumbs up button and Jennifer says are county mandatory rabies or if they bite? Yeah so that actually I, I want to answer this before we get off and then we'll get off rabies is a mandatory vaccine however once they have immunity and you do a titer test you get a certificate of immunity so um even even if something happens you have a certificate of immunity showing your dog is immune to rabies so that there that, that's again why, why i say we really have to um, educate ourselves because a titer test is going to show immunity and then you're left with a certificate of immunity. Um, so it's really about educating um, and really educating more and more people. Um, Susie says, hope you do as well. Great tips. Thanks so much, Susie, for being here and being so active. I really appreciate all of the chats, all of the comments, and I hope that helps you as well, Jennifer. I hope that um, all of you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you on our next live.